Now, in our coordinate system data window, gives us all the information that we need to know as far as our tool start level, our clearance level, our upper plane, our part lower plane, and our tool Z level for lifting the tool above the part during rotation of our axis. Our tool start level is where our tool actually starts um, before it actually starts spinning. This is also the level where our depth of our tool, the height of the tool, I'm sorry, the length of our tool, that's more like it, where the length of the tool is actually put into G43. Our clearance level is our level of where the tool will go up to when it goes from one area to the next. This is extremely important when using clamps over the part. If you have a clamp, let's say it's 40 millimeters over the part, you may want to put a value here of, say, 50 millimeters. But if you're working without clamps, working uh, in a vise, for example, which is very, very uh, common, you can simply put any value you'd like there. I usually put 10 millimeters. Now, my part upper level and my part lower level actually represent the height of the part itself. My part upper level normally, in this particular case, is zero. This is actually pertaining towards the home position itself. If I'm not sure, I can always click on the button and simply click on the face, and this value will automatically be here. Now my part lower level, same thing. Simply click on the bottom, and I have my part lower level. But you'll note that my numbers here are the exact same thing that was before. This is because the moment I pick my home position using the face, the part is automatically measured, and these values are automatically put in here. My part upper level and my part lower level. My tool start level and clearance level are automatically put in here uh, through the settings that I have in my SolidCam settings. Now my tool Z level is simply the value that I want my tool to go up if for some reason I'm working in a fourth axis machine for example and now I want my part to turn. So in that particular case I don't want to leave my clearance level at 10 millimeters but rather I'd first rather pick my tool further up to a specific level and only then will it turn. I can simply click on OK right now and you'll note that we have now our Mac 1 position 1. If I want to create another home position I can simply click right click on this and say add or I can edit the position that I'm in right now. This is enough for right now and I'll simply click on the V box which brings me back to my data area milling part data. Now because the way my cam settings were set, my solid cam settings were set, my stock and target model were automatically defined. For example if I were to go into stock now you'll see that I already have stock and it's in the box form. If I were to do show on model you'll see my box around the part or is it simply show and you'll see the actual stock itself. The same thing is true with my target. That has also been automatically created. If I were to do show, you can see my stock that has been created. I'm sorry, my target that has been created. I'm basically ready right now. One more thing I could deal with if I want to is my program number and my subroutine number. Simply change it to whatever program number I want it to be and from where I want my subroutines to start from. Okay, I'm basically finished. All I have to do right now is simply click on OK and we're ready to work. Now, there are other settings within our camp part definition, such as different ways of defining our home position, 
Uh, we have part settings, tool options, Mac options. These will be dealt with in a different lesson. Thank you for joining us today on Solid Kim Professor on our lesson on creating a new part in Take care and have a nice day.